myself never really questioning that I would be a stay-at-home mom. That's what I thought my future held for me. Uh, I had contemplated that theme repeatedly as my adult life started to take kind of a different direction. And so as I was thinking about dissertation topics, studying members of my own peer group um, about an experience that I shared with them seemed a little bit unusual to me. So I kind of started to socialize this idea with scholars at Boston College and across the Boston research community. So while many people encouraged me to pursue it and saw this as a great opportunity, um, I continued to get some messages that not everybody thought that researching something so aligned with my life experience was okay. And I had a particularly poignant experience one day when I was reading for Jean's research seminar while sitting in the waiting room at the dentist's office. And I just want to make sure, are you seeing the screen, just the one with the quotes on it? Okay, great. Excellent. Um, so I'm reading at the dentist's office and this book called, you know, Surviving Your Dissertation by Ruta Sam and Newton. And I come across this like stark warning to doctoral students uh, that just completely jumped off the page for me. Uh, so they said topics that may be linked too closely with your own life will necessarily stir up emotional issues that may get in the way of completing the dissertation. And they went on to say, conducting research demands ruthless honesty and objectivity. It is much better to begin with a hunch than as a polemical exercise to substantiate your point of view. I read this and I was like, wow. So researching something connected to my own life experience is going to be emotionally draining, introduce bias into my work and potentially prevent me from completing my PhD. So that was that was daunting for me, yet I knew that some scholars had done this successfully and I was anxious to learn from them. So I came up with this idea that I wanted to organize a panel discussion at the Academy of Management annual meeting and I wanted to invite Jean's partner with me. Now, I was completely unprepared for her reaction when I officially asked what she thought about doing a session together about me search. While she saw some parallels with her work on insider outsider research, she told me in those uncertain terms, like, I don't want to have anything to do with it. And I was completely surprised by this. But I later kind of figured out why she reacted that way initially. Um, and while I, this unexpected response from her really reinforced the perception that this was not a cool thing to everybody, I just felt compelled to pursue that idea. So I went into the literature and started learning how other people talk about this phenomenon. I developed a broader vocabulary to uh, describe my interests and formulated a plan for the session. And I got some prominent scholars on board, including Glenn Kreiner, who I know is on your program, who had studied a scandal at his own institution, and Teresa Amabile, who was studying retirement while preparing to retire. And so when I went back to Jean, just to ask her to suggest some possible discussions for this session, which I now framed around conducting research in familiar settings, I was surprised and delighted when she said, of course I'll do it. <laughs> So that's how we got started. And I'm gonna let Jean take over and, and talk a little bit about how she perceived the beginnings of this project. Okay, thank you. Um, we had had at Boston College before Elise got there, uh, somebody on the faculty who's who believed that the primary focus of research should be on the researcher. And he and I had not always gotten along. And I had thought that was a little narrow. So when Elise said, me search, it evoked many memories that were not pleasant. And I don't know what kind of experience those who are in, in this room have had, although it would be interesting to learn later, but there are some things that can be kind of a trigger. Um, but when Elise, so in other words, my response to Elise was based on something personally relevant to me, although not relevant to her. In fact, when I said the person's name, um, 
the other day when we were talking, she had no idea, she had almost no idea who I was talking about. So I, th I think that's actually pertinent to this discussion. But actually, many of us, probably all of us studying, so study, who are doing research, study something that's of some type of personal relevance. And there are several different examples. One could be the subject matter in general, what's the topic that's being discussed. Another is the context. What are the kinds of situations in which what we're studying is, is happening? What's the theory? For example, Elise's theory had a lot to do with identity work, which is something that everybody in our department knows a little about. She ended up having more people, she ended up having her dissertation committee be people who know a lot about identity. It can be geography. Where is something taking place that really matters? It can be what method is going to be used and what, um, what what's attractive about that method, or it can be a chance to work with a friend. So at least if you could just move the slide once, I will give the example. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, in the, in the northern part of the US. I'm a little bit south of you. I'm, where I'm from is a little bit south of you, I think, right? Um, so, um, I was invited to write an article for something and I had to figure out what it would be about, but I have been having conversations with a friend named Sue Mormon, who is, who is from the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And so I thought, oh yeah, this could be an adventure. We could do something together. We're, we're friends. We could do something more than just have tea together at two o'clock in the afternoon, my time and 11 a.m. her time. I had grown up, since I had grown up in Cleveland, Ohio, it really mattered to me what happens in that city. And she had been involved in collecting data about a change initiative that had happened in there, a citywide, actually regional wide, Northeast Ohio wide development of a local foods economy that had to do a lot with different kinds of farming, getting all, getting many people who didn't think of themselves as farmers to become farmers, to figure out ways to get them to sell, sell the results of their, sell what they produce to local restaurants. Uh, the Cleveland Clinic ended up being a primary leader in this initiative. I have been interested for a long time in organizational change. So the fact that this, what, what she was, had studied was an organizational change initiative in a city where I grew up it, that I cared a lot about still, a chance to work with a friend. For me, this was personally relevant, even though I have to admit, I don't care at all about farming. I, I admit, so the specific topic I, I learned more about farming from working on this paper than I have any desire to know. Um, so that's one example. I think it's worth thinking about, about what could be personally relevant research. And there are many more of them, but that's enough. Lise, you're muted. Thank you, Jean. Um, so as Jean described, like she came to the point where she was like, yeah, this is something that I want to do together. And, and I was so glad she did. We had a great time. Um, but there were several steps involved in getting from that kind of idea point to actually having a finished uh, symposium in academy of management perspectives. And so you know, I think what we started with was working together to further develop the panel discussion that I had sort of envisioned for the 2017 academy of management meeting. And when we got everyone together, the panelists just shared these wonderful stories and insights about their experiences conducting research on topics or in settings that were close to them. Um, and they talked about things like maintaining boundaries, engaging in reflection 
reflexivity and verifying research findings with participants. Um, some of them, someone even like made this audacious assertion that researchers should get personally involved in their research and be transparent about it. And when I went back to look at my notes from that day, I actually made a note that I felt I like had goosebumps while I was listening to people. It was just really moving for me. Um, and during the discussion after the presentations, uh, several of the audience members said how much the session resonated with them. And one man even stood up and said it was the most impactful session he attended in several decades at the conference, which made a real impression on me. Um, and then, so when somebody suggested- Excuse me, Elise, I should, yeah. I should interrupt because we can't remember for sure, but we think the person who said that is the person who I was not trying. I was trying to make sure Elise did not emulate in her in her dissertation. Okay, back to you, Elise. And I didn't have any of that backstory at the time, by the way. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, with all that in mind, when somebody said, "Hey, this would be a great research article," like I thought, "Oh, that's kind of an interesting idea." So Gina and I sent some feelers out to the panelists, and everybody was interested in in continuing uh, the project. And so, you know, bringing that project to fruition wasn't a simple matter itself. The first thing we had to do was find an appropriate place to publish. We looked at several different um, journals, including like JMI, JOB, ORM, and AMLE, uh, and decided on Academy of Management Perspectives, which we'll call AMP, because it really fit the angle that we wanted to take with our work. Um, and rather than just write one single article, we decided to go for this symposium format, which is a collection of papers on this common theme, so that several of the research teams would be able to share their own unique experiences conducting this kind of research. Uh, so, so G and I pitched the idea to the editor, Phil Fan, in a pre-submission proposal, and then we followed that up with a conversation. And he was very enthusiastic about the idea. He encouraged us to even invite more research teams to join the project, and he offered to join us for a writer's workshop. Uh, so we started with our original crew of panelists, uh, and there were four of them, and it grew to a collection of eight research teams. So this expanded group included uh, working mothers who had studied pregnancy and motherhood at work, uh, also an insider outsider look at the historical trauma of the partition of British India and other projects that were personally relevant to the researchers. So in the spring of 2018, we held a writer's workshop at Boston College where the research teams attended mostly in person. We did have a couple who joined via Zoom and that's what you see up in the corner. Oh, I don't think I captioned that picture, I'm sorry. I'll tell you, it's it's a picture, if you're familiar with the concept of flat Stanley, it's where you take a picture of somebody and make a little stick person and take them around with you. So uh, we, had, we had flat Stanley personas for Glenn Craner and Aparna Joshi who couldn't be there in person. Uh, so we were a little pre-pandemic cutting edge with the Zoom thing for a full day event. Uh, and in addition to coming together around our common theme, we shared our research projects with each other and experiences you know, conducting this research. And then Phil really came in and taught us how could we cater our papers to the AMP audience. So once we'd had that writer's workshop, uh, we separated all the research teams into groups. Everybody went off and did their writing themselves. And then Jean and I coordinated a peer feedback process where each of the research teams could receive feedback from other members of another team before they revised their paper and went on to submit it to AMP. And there each a paper underwent a double blind review process, at least to the extent that the authors could mask their identities while actually telling their stories. Now, as you can imagine throughout this process, you know, as a kind of junior doctoral student, I was just absorbing ideas from these research teams and trying them on for size while I was working on my dissertation. So for example, I became aware of my own tendency to kind of like separate from my research population and the need that that created to keep coming back to insiders as well as outsiders to get perspectives on my work. So in the process, of uh, socializing our ideas and drafting the papers and processing feedback, we actually lost two research teams whose connection with their own work didn't quite mesh with the contribution that we were trying to make, which was an interesting lesson in and of itself. 
And in the end, the published symposium included six different papers, which I've listed here, in addition to genes and my focal article. And so the topics that we had uh, included retirement, and I'm just going to briefly summarize what's up on the screen. Uh, so we had a paper on retirement, one about a woman who um, volunteered in a home for commercially sexually exploited women, and she ended up writing a paper about their experiences. We had the one I mentioned about the British partition of India, the other one I mentioned about pregnancy at work, and then we had Glenn and Aparna talking about what was it to study uh, workers with developmental disabilities when they had children uh, who fit that profile as well. And then we had one about a sex scandal at, at Penn State. So we had quite an array of papers. So what I'm going to mention is just very briefly, what are some of the learnings from the papers? From, uh, so Teresa Mabule and Tim Hall ended up saying among their learnings that research that is personally relevant may investigate aspects of phenomena that would be overlooked by arms left leg researchers, such as, for example, there's more to retirement than finances. But they also cautioned it's better done in teams because as individuals, we could get really caught. Katina Sawyer, who was studying uh, trafficked women, commented that it's possible that participants gave me greater access to higher quality information because she had been volunteering where they were and she had a deeper emotional connection with them. Tarun Khanna and his co-authors commented that our study made us more aware of differences in our perspectives and how we were outsiders to each other's respective societies, even though we had presumed that we were not. Dana Greenberg and her collaborators talked about complexities of personally relevant research that became visible to them when they were applying a perspective of feminist methodology. And four of the complexities they mentioned were engaging personal and professional selves managing power dynamics, integrating emotional and rational understanding, and advancing theory and practice. Glenn Kreiner and Aparna Joshi, both of whom have a person with some type of disability in their families, talked about the importance of a liminal researcher who's somebody who's inside the world of developmental disabilities, but outside the population of those with the disability. And then there are Bishop and his collaborators talking about the uh, Jerry Sandusky sex scandal at, at Penn State University, commented that an inside-out approach begins on the inside as researchers leverage their own real-time relevant organizational experiences along with their resources as researchers, such as data relational relationships and events. So our our sense is that there was a lot that was could be learned, both good things and complexities from conducting this type of conducting research that is personally relevant. And we think the papers end up giving a really good combination of perspectives on that. And with that, we would love to just open it up and give you some time to ask us questions. I have uh, less time available than Jean. I can stay for probably seven or eight minutes um, to, because I need to get back to class, but Jean can stay on longer. So please feel free yes. to ask whatever can be helpful for you to understand about this process. No, I forgot to unmute. Uh, thank you so much. Just gonna... And yeah, let's open up.